the bell icon to turn on notifications. We've made the files the instructor uses in this tutorial available for free. Just click the link below in the video details to get these. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on Excel for Business Analysts. We're done in section three and in this section we're taking a look at lookups. Now as I explained in the previous module, lookups are an essential tool for you to have in your toolkit as a business analyst. And you'll probably find that they're one of the functions in Excel that you're going to be using most frequently. So throughout this entire section, I'm going to try and run through a number of different examples of how you can use lookups to extract data from one table and pull it into another. And we're going to start out with one of the most popular lookup functions, and that is the VLOOKUP function. Now, you'll probably be aware that there is something called VLOOKUP and also something called HLOOKUP. And if you're wondering what the difference is, all it really means is that VLOOKUP means that your data is running vertically down the page, whereas horizontal lookup means that your data is running horizontally. And we're going to take a look at an example of HLOOKUP a bit later on in this section. But for now, we're going to focus our attention on VLOOKUP and specifically VLOOKUP exact match. So let's start out by taking a look at the data that we're using. So I'm using the workbook called VLOOKUP exact.xlsx. And this workbook has two worksheets, the one that I'm currently on that's labeled VLOOKUP. And then we have another worksheet at the bottom here called catalog. And on this page, I have three columns of data that's showing me part numbers, a description of that part number, and then the price of that particular part number. So this might be data for somebody who works in a large hardware store. Now, what you'll see here on the catalog page is that we have three headings, part number, description, and price. Now, what I'm aiming to do here, if I jump back to the VLOOKUP worksheet, is you can see that I have a small table on this particular page, which has some part numbers listed, but currently the description is empty and so is the unit price. So what I'm aiming to do here is utilize VLOOKUP to look in the catalog, find the part number and then pull back the relevant description and price and populate these empty fields in my table. Now, the most important thing when you're doing a lookup is that wherever your data is, and I'm using data that's contained on a separate worksheet, but it might even be that you have it in a completely different workbook. The one important thing you need to have is that there is a common field between the two tables, because that field will be used as the reference point when performing the lookup. So in my case, with the data that I have, I can see that the part number is that common denominator between these two tables. So the part number is essentially the key to all of this. It's what I'm going to use as my primary lookup value. Now I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can construct a VLOOKUP that is reasonably simple once you get the hang of it. So I'm going to click in this description field and I'm going to type in equals VLOOKUP. I'm going to open my bracket. Now let's take a look at our first argument highlighted underneath in bold. It says lookup value. Now, as I mentioned, your lookup value is that common denominator between those two tables. So for me, that is the part number. Comma, to move on to the next argument, table array. So it's saying, okay, you want me to look up the part number. Where do you want me to look up this part number? Now, for me, I want to look up this part number in the catalog. So what I could do is jump across to catalog and highlight all of the data that I have in this catalog, like so. I'm going to jump up to my formula bar now to continue this, comma. It's now asking for a column index number. So it's saying, OK, I'm looking up the part number in the catalog, but which column of information do you want me to pull back? So. I'm looking for the description first of all. Now, one thing you have to realize with VLOOKUP, and this is actually one of the limitations of VLOOKUP, is that VLOOKUP numbers columns from left to right. So essentially, column one is the part number, column two is description, and column three is the price in this case. 
So because VLOOKUP works in that way, it means that the lookup value, in this case the part number, always has to be to the left of the information you want to pull back. Now that might be okay in some instances, but sometimes it's not. And later in this section, I'm going to show you a more flexible way to perform lookups. But for now, we're just going to type in column two for the description, comma. And now I need to say if I want to do a true, which is an approximate match, or a false, which is an exact match. So what do I want to do here? Well, I'm looking up the part number and I want it to look up the exact number. So my last argument here is going to be false. So I can type in false like so and close my bracket. And that is essentially my VLOOKUP formula. Let's hit enter. And there we go. I can see that that has pulled back the description. And if I wanted to do a quick visual check, what I could do is I'm just going to copy this number. I'm going to go back to the catalog. I'm going to do a control F to find, and I'm going to find that part number which is just there, and I can see that yes, that is the correct description. Now I'm going to do this again to pull back the unit price. So let's type in VLOOKUP, open bracket, our lookup value is still our part number, comma, our table array, I'm going to jump back to catalogue and I'm going to select all of this table one more time, like so. So I'm now working up in the formula bar, comma, now this time I want to pull back the price. So my column number that I'm pulling back is going to be column three, comma, and I still want to do an exact match. Now remember in Excel, you can use zero for false and one for true. So if I type in zero on the end there for false, close my bracket, hit enter, I'm gonna get the correct price. And let's just jump back and do a visual check because it's not very far down. There it is, just there. Now, in both of those examples, you've seen me go in to the catalog and highlight everything in this catalog, which can get a little bit tedious, particularly if you have large amounts of data. I'm quite fortunate my data set isn't huge. I can do that very simply. But if you've got thousands and thousands of rows, you don't want to be having to highlight the table every single time. So what I tend to do is I tend to name this range of cells. So I'm going to click, I'm going to do control A to highlight everything. And then up in the name box, we've seen this before in previous modules, I'm going to name this catalog and press enter. So now when I construct my VLOOKUP, it is a little bit simpler. So I'm going to say equals VLOOKUP. This time I'm searching for this particular part number, comma, now, instead of having to jump across and highlight that cell range, I can now press the F3 key to bring up all of my named ranges and I can just select catalog. Comma, the column that I want to pull back is the description, so column two, comma, and I'm doing an exact match, false. So I'm gonna put zero on the end, close my bracket, hit enter, and there we go. Now I'm going to do this one more time for good measure because I really do believe with things like VLOOKUP, practice makes perfect. But I'm going to do it a slightly different way. So instead of typing into the cell, I'm going to utilize the functions dialog box just so you can see how easy it is to use that as well. So let's jump up to our little FX button, insert function. And I'm going to do a quick search for VLOOKUP. I'm going to click go, there he is, double click. So this is our functions dialog box, and you can see that these are exactly the same arguments that we get when we're typing it into the cell. So my lookup value is the part number, B6. Table array, I can press F3 again to bring up my named ranges. Double click to select catalog. Column index, while well, I'm looking up the unit price this time, so that is column three. And my range lookup, that's that true or false argument, I want to match the part number exactly, so I'm going to say false and click on OK. And there we go. So now what I could do for quickness is I could copy these down like so. Now one thing you'll notice with this is that for one of these part numbers, one that suspiciously says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it says NA in there. 
which means they can't find this part number in the catalogue. Now you could leave those NAs just there, or you could make those a little bit neater and a little bit more meaningful for anybody looking at this spreadsheet, so they know exactly what that means, that it's not an error, it just means that the part number wasn't found. It's fairly straightforward to do, and it comes under the bracket of error checking, which we're going to get onto in the next couple of modules. So I'm going to leave those as NA for the time being, and we're going to cover that very shortly. Now, the final thing I might want to do here would be to add some formatting. Let's add some dollar symbols. And I'm actually going to change that to currency formatting like so. So as you can see, VLOOKUP, very simple once you get your head around it. My biggest takeaway here would be always to name your ranges because it's just going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to constructing your VLOOKUPs. Now in the next module, I'm going to be showing you how to do a VLOOKUP with the TRUE argument on the end. In every example we've used in this module, it's been that false argument. So I'm going to show you where and why you would use the true argument on the end of your VLOOKUPs. So please join me for that. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on Excel for Business Analysts. We're down in section 3 where we're looking at all things related to lookups. And if you remember, in the last module, we were taking a look at VLOOKUP and how that works. But the examples that I showed you in the previous module were all using that final false argument in the VLOOKUP formula. So what I want to do in this module is just very quickly run through the kind of situation where you might use the TRUE argument on the end of your VLOOKUP formula. And I've got a very simple and straightforward example on the screen that is hopefully going to demonstrate this quite nicely to you so you can understand the difference between the two and then know which one to use in any given scenario that might come up in your daily work. So what I have on my worksheet is I have a table at the top highlighted in blue that's showing me a salary range. So it's showing me the low end of salaries in column B. Then it's showing me the high end in column C I then have a range description in column D, and then finally in column E, I have a marginal tax rate for each of those salary brackets. And then underneath that, I have a little table that lists out some annual salaries, and we have the marginal tax rate column is currently empty, and that is what we're endeavouring to complete. And this is the kind of scenario where you would use the VLOOKUP approximate or TRUE argument in your VLOOKUP formula. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump in and I'm just going to name this top table. As I told you before, I like to name all of my tables or all of my ranges. So I'm going to do Control A to highlight this table and I'm actually going to format this as a table. And I'm going to select just this blue formatting just here. It says my table has headers, which it does. Click on OK. What I'm then going to do is name this table from the Table Design ribbon over in this first group. So currently it says table two, which is a bit too generic. I'm gonna call this tax underscore rate and hit enter. So my table's now all named, which makes it a lot easier for me to recall that table when I'm putting together my formula. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out with a regular V lookup, open my bracket. Now, as usual, we need to use a lookup value. So what I want to look up here is the annual salary. So my lookup value is going to be B13. I'm going to say comma. It's now asking me for the table array or the table name in this case. So remember, if you have named your tables, I can just start to type it in. And underneath, it's now coming up with my tax rate table. I can double click. And you can see that I know I've got the correct table because it's highlighted it with a red border. Let's say comma, it's now asking me for the column index number. So, so far in this example, everything is exactly the same as the last example that we looked at in the previous module. Now, in this case, I want to pull back the marginal tax rate. So counting our columns from left to right, I want to pull back column number four. Comma. Now this is where we get the change. So in our previous examples, we always went for that false argument. But in this case, we're going to need to use true for an approximate match. Now, why do we need to use that? 
Well, we're currently looking up the annual salary of £55,000. And if you look at the table above, what you'll see is that we don't actually have the exact figure of 55,000 listed in there. So if I was to do a false or an exact match, what Excel is going to do is look for 55,000. And it doesn't actually exist in that top table. 55,000 falls within this range just here, 35,000 and 85,000. So it's going to be sort of somewhere in the middle here. But because we don't have 55,000 listed exactly, this is why we would need to use the approximate match. So I'm going to say true on the end and close my bracket. Hit enter and see what we get. We get a result of 25%. And if I look across, I can see that yes, that is actually the range that 55,000 falls into. Now, of course, what I could do here is I could utilize my autofill handle and fill that down, which I will do in a moment. But let's just do this one more time, but this time using the functions dialog box. So I'm going to double click to select my function, which happens to be at the top of my list as it was the last one that I used. My lookup value is going to be my annual salary, B14. Table array is going to be tax rate, so I'm going to say tax underscore rate. My column index number is going to be 4, and my range lookup is going to be true. Now remember, you can substitute true and false for zeros and ones, so false is zero and true is one, so I could put one in there if I wanted to. Click on OK and I get my result of 10%. Let's do a quick visual check. And I can see that yes, 8699 is in this bracket just here and the marginal tax is in fact 10%. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use my autofill handle, double click to copy those down. And again, we can do a very quick visual check. 90,000 is going to fall in this one here, which is 28%. And 450,000 is actually above, so it should be 35%, which it is. So hopefully that makes sense and shows you the difference between that true and that false argument on the end of your VLOOKUP formula. That's it for this module. In the next module, I'm going to show you how you can deal with data that expands when using VLOOKUP. So please join me for that. Hi guys and welcome back to this course on Excel for Business Analysts. We're still down in section 3 where we've been looking at lookups. And in the previous two modules I showed you two different ways that you can do a VLOOKUP using that false and the true argument. What I want to focus on in this module is how you can deal with data that expands so that your VLOOKUPs still work correctly. Now, most of the time, you'll find that your data won't stay static. It's quite a rare occurrence to have a data set that never gets updated or added to. So if you are a business analyst, maybe for retail or some kind of sales figures, those sales figures will probably be added to as each month passes. And it's the same for this example that we have on the worksheet now. So we're going back to that parts catalog that we were looking at previously. So I have a whole list of part numbers here, their descriptions and their price, but this data probably isn't going to stay static. It might be that we update our inventory with new parts and we add them into this parts catalog at the bottom and there'll be new part numbers, new descriptions and new unit prices. So essentially at any point this data could start to grow. So it's really important that if we're referring to this data in any kind of VLOOKUP function or anything else for that matter, that that new data gets included and it doesn't become too much of a burden on us. We don't want to have to go in and start messing around with cell ranges, cell references when we add new figures in. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can get around that. One of them we've already seen, but we're going to do a recap and I'm going to show you another example. But first of all, let's take a look at what happens if we don't accommodate expanding data. So what I'm basically going to do here is pretty much what I did before. I have my parts catalog. I'm going to click in it, press Control A to highlight everything, and I'm going to name this range. So I'm going to go up to my name box and I'm going to type in parts underscore 
catalog and hit enter. I'm now going to go back to my VLOOKUP worksheet. And if you remember, this is where we have some part numbers and then we want to pull back the description and the unit price. So as we've seen before, and this is just a repeat of what we did a couple of modules ago, I'm going to say VLOOKUP. Open my bracket, my lookup value is the part number, comma, my table array. Well, for this, I can press F3, which will bring up any ranges that I've named and I can see my parts catalog sitting just there. Click on OK. Comma, I need the column index number. I'm looking for the description, which is column two. And in this example, I want it to exactly match that part number. So we're going to do a false on the end, close my bracket and hit enter. And you can see it nicely pulls back that description. And you'll see that if I copy this down, I'm going to copy it all the way to the bottom. I'm just going to copy it down to there. You can see that that pretty pulls back what we were expecting. So wherever it finds that part number, it's given me the description. Where it doesn't find the part number, because this one doesn't actually exist in the catalog, it's given me an NA. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back to the catalog and I'm going to add a new part number onto the end of this list. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in 4567 is our part number. And just to keep this brief, I'm going to say this is a door hinges. And we'll give that a value of $20 per unit. So let's now go back and see if we can pull that through. So I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to type in part number 4567. And let's see, if I copy this VLOOKUP formula down, let's see if it works. So I'm going to use my autofill handle, drag down, and you can see it doesn't. It's not finding it, even though I have 4567 listed just here. Now, why isn't it finding it? So if we look at our formula in the formula bar, you can see I'm looking up cell B10, which is correct. I'm looking up in the parts catalog. Now, the parts catalog is a named range. Now, if you ever want to go in and take a look at your named ranges, if you jump up to the formulas tab and go into the name manager, you can see there, there is my named range parts catalog. And if I click on edit, it's going to allow me to go in and I can see where that's referring to. So it's telling me catalog worksheet A1 to C85. So let's take a look on the catalog worksheet. So you can see that this range stops at C85 because I've added something in outside of that range, which is why it's not being picked up over here. So in this particular scenario, using a named range is not always the best option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into my name manager and I'm actually going to delete out the parts catalog. I'm also going to delete out this other one that I have in here, like so. And we're going to do this a slightly different way. Now, let's remove what we just added once again. Go back to our VLOOKUP. And I'm going to remove all of these errors, like so. And we're going to try it again, but we're going to use a slightly different method. So let's construct our VLOOKUP. Open bracket. B5, comma. Now, when it comes to the table array, instead of utilizing a named range, if I know that my data is going to expand, I can select the columns instead. So what I could do here when I'm selecting table array is jump across to catalog. I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top and I'm going to hover my mouse over the column A until I get that little black arrow. I'm going to click and drag across. And that is essentially selecting columns A, B and C. I'm going to say comma. I'm now working up in the formula bar. I want to pull back the description, so column two. And I'm doing an exact match, which is false or zero. Close my bracket and hit enter. And you can see that that's completed it. And once again, I can drag this down. I'm just going to leave that bottom one for the time being. All looks OK so far. Now for 4567, if I go back to my catalog, go down to the bottom, and once again, I'm going to add 4567 door hinges, $20. Let's go back and let's drag our formula down and see if that works. And it does, because essentially the VLOOKUP is referring to everything in column A, B or C. And that stretches all the way down to the end of 
the workbook. So columns is a really good alternative if you're going to have data that expands. Now, the other method that you can use to accommodate expanding data is one that we've done before, and that is to utilize tables, because tables will expand to accommodate any new information. So what I could do here is I could click in my data, press Control A to select everything, go up to the Home ribbon, and I can either go to Format as Table and select one of these options, or alternatively, if I press Control T, that's going to create a table for me as well out of my data. I'm going to make sure my table has headers is selected and click on OK. And then the final thing I'm going to do here is name my table. So once again, on the table design ribbon where it says table one, I'm going to call this one parts category and hit enter. Let's go back to our VLOOKUP. I'm going to delete out all of this and I'm going to construct my VLOOKUP one more time. We're going to look up B5. We're going to select our table, which is parts category. And you'll see as I type it in, it comes up underneath to select. We're pulling back column two and we're doing a false or an exact match. So zero on the end. Hit enter and I can then safely copy this down and you can see that it works. So let's add something new into our parts catalog. So I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom and let's add uh, 8, 9, 10. We're going to call this door frames and we're going to say $100. Now what's happened here is that because this data is in a table, as I've added this new row in, the table is automatically expanded. So the new entry is essentially part of that table. So it means that if I now go back to my VLOOKUP and type in a new part number, 8910, I can then copy the formula down and it's going to pick it up because it's referencing the table name and the table will always expand to accommodate any new data. So those are two different methods for dealing with data that's going to change, data that's going to be added to when you're constructing your VLOOKUP formula. I hope you found that useful. We're going to move on to the next module now where we're going to start talking about HLOOKUP. So please join me for that. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course in Excel for Business Analysts. We're still down in section three, where we've been taking a look at how you can utilize lookups to look up information. And in the previous modules, we've mainly been focusing on the VLOOKUP function. What I want to do in this particular module is now switch our focus to HLOOKUP. Now, if you haven't already worked this out, the main difference between VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP is that VLOOKUP allows you to look up data that's laid out vertically, whereas HLOOKUP allows you to look up data that's laid out horizontally. So it really depends on the kind of data you have and the way you have it positioned on the page. So really just to illustrate that point, we're going to run through a couple of examples of HLOOKUP. Now I will say fundamentally when you're constructing the HLOOKUP formula, it's not a great deal different to VLOOKUP. So once you've got your head around one of them, you're pretty much good to go with the next one. But let's dive in and take a look at a couple of examples. Now I'm going to start out with an example that you're familiar with. It's the one that we've used in the previous couple of modules. And that is this example of the parts catalog. Now, I haven't changed anything in here as yet, but what you can see is currently the way I have my data arranged, it's in a vertical format. So I have my column headings listed across the top, part number, description and price. And then I have my data in rows running underneath. So when I'm trying to complete my table, I'm looking up my data vertically. What I'm going to show you now is I'm going to take this data and I'm actually going to flip it around so that it runs horizontally and then we're going to utilize HLOOKUP to perform the same lookup. Now I could have done this before I started this video but I wanted to leave it in because it is just another little extra thing that's really nice to know in Excel if you ever need to utilize it. And that is how you can quickly flip data around. 
So what I mean by that is instead of having my data running vertically, I now want to flip this data so it's running horizontally across the page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in my parts catalog and I'm going to press Control A to select everything. I'm then going to copy my data. Control C is the shortcut key. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this data, but I'm going to do a paste special. Now I could choose to paste my data on the same worksheet, but just to keep things a little bit cleaner, I'm going to create a new worksheet and I'm going to paste it in here. And what I'm going to do is make sure I have cell A1 selected. I'm going to jump up to home and I'm going to click the lower half of that paste button. And what I'm going to do is instead of using just a regular paste, I'm going to jump into paste special and I'm going to select this little option here, transpose. And what that will allow you to do is paste data that flows in the opposite direction. So now you can see I have the parts catalog data, but my column headings are no longer running across the top in the columns. They're now running down the side in the rows and the data is spread horizontally across the page. So if you had data that was kind of laid out like this and you wanted to do a lookup, you would need to use HLOOKUP in this scenario. So let's do that. So let's jump back to our input sheet. This is where we're going to be pulling back the description and the unit price and we have our part numbers. Now this is still running vertically down the page, but that doesn't matter because the data I'm looking up is horizontally. That's why we need to use HLOOKUP. And which way you choose to do this, which one of the methods I've shown you in some of the previous modules is entirely up to you when it comes to how you select your data. So I'm going to jump back to my data just here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this data and I'm going to name it as a range first of all. So while it's all selected, I'm going to click in my name box just here and I'm going to call this parts one and hit enter. I'm now going to utilize that range as I construct my H lookup. So all I need to do here is say equals H lookup, open my bracket, and you'll notice that pretty much all of the arguments are the same. So it's asking me for my lookup value, which is my part number, comma. It's asking me for the table array. Well, I've just named that range parts one. So I'm going to select that, comma. Now it's asking me for a row index number. If you remember with VLOOKUP, it asks you for a column reference number. So you do practically the same thing. You just count the number of rows. So I want the description and that is in row two, comma, and I'm doing an exact match. I want to exactly match that part number. So my final argument is false. Hit enter and it pulls back the correct result. I can now use my autofill handle just to copy that down. And if you remember, one, two, three, four, five is not a number that currently exists in the part catalog, which is why we're getting an NA. I'm going to do this again for unit price, but I'm just going to show you a slightly different way. So let's jump back to our horizontal catalog. So in the previous module, I named the range. But if you remember when we were looking at VLOOKUPs, if new parts were to be added onto the end of this, the range doesn't automatically update. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a table so that I don't need to worry about that. I can add as many as I like in, and I know that my HLOOKUP is still going to work. So with my data selected, I'm going to convert this to a table. Control T. Now, this is quite an important step here. So it's picked up my data, which is absolutely fine. It's now saying my table has headers. Now, if I was to keep this box ticked, it's basically going to take this first row as having headers. So what I want to do is I want to say, no, my table doesn't have headers. Click on OK, and it's going to give me another row at the top. But don't worry about that too much at the moment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to name my table and I'm going to call this parts two and hit enter. Now in the next H lookup that I'm going to construct, I'm going to be looking for the price. So that is going to be row number three. So let's jump back to our table and construct our H lookup. And this time I'm going to use the insert function dialog box. Let's do a quick search for H lookup. There we go. 
And lookup value is going to be the part number. It's now asking me for the table array, so I call that table parts two. My row index number, so the row that I'm pulling back is row three. And my range lookup, that true or false argument, that's going to be a false and click on OK. And you can see once again, if I double click, it's poured back those unit prices. And of course, the advantage of putting it into a table is that I can add data onto the end, new data, that table will auto expand and my formula is still going to work. Now, if you're wondering what to do about this kind of ugly looking top heading row that we have there, you can always right click and you can hide that row away if you wanted to. Now I'm going to show you one more example of HLOOKUP just so you can really get a feel for how it works. Let's jump across to our HLOOKUP2 spreadsheet. Now in this spreadsheet we have a table at the top that's showing sales, the amount of commission for each of those sales and also the amount of bonus applied to those sales figures. In the table underneath I have a list of salespeople and how many sales in dollars each of those salespeople have generated. And what I want to do is I want to complete the commission amount, the commission amount in dollars, and then the bonus as well. So what I can do here is use HLOOKUP to pull those figures from the top table and populate this bottom table. So let's deal with the commission percentage first of all. I'm going to type in equals HLOOKUP. My lookup value is going to be that sales figure, so B9 comma, it's asking me for the table array. Now I haven't gone in and named the range or created a table. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select the data. So I'm going to just select like so. And that's fairly straightforward to do if you have a reasonably small table. Now one thing you need to be aware of here is if you want to auto fill this HLOOKUP formula going down, you want to make sure that you make these references absolute so that when you drag the formula down, Excel doesn't try and move those references down one cell. So I'm just going to click within A2, press the F4 key to make that absolute, click in K4 and press the F4 key to make it absolute once more. I'm going to say comma, row index number. Now I'm looking for the commission percentage. So I can see that that is row two, comma, and what am I doing here? I'm looking for the sales figure. And these sales figures don't exactly match the sales figures we have in the top table. They might fall between two numbers. So I want to do an approximate match, which is that true argument on the end. And hit enter. And what I can do is double click to copy that down. And I now get my percentage sales for each of my sales people. And if you want to, you can do a quick visual check just to make sure that that's all correct. Now in the next column, I don't actually need to use a lookup for this because I'm just doing a straightforward calculation, but let's do it, it's good practice. So I'm gonna say equals sales multiplied by commission and hit enter. And that's gonna tell me, I'm gonna auto fill that down, the amount of commission in dollar value for each of the sales people. And then finally, I want to see how much bonus each of these people are going to get. So I am going to use HLOOKUP again for this. So what I'm going to do here is equals HLOOKUP, open bracket. The sales figure is my lookup value, comma. So now table array, and I'm going to do this a slightly different way. I'm going to allow for more data expanding on the end, and I'm just going to select all three rows. So you can see there rows two to four. Now again, I want to make sure that I lock these, so I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of both of them so that when I drag this formula down, they don't move. Comma, row index number, I'm looking for the bonus, which is row three, and I'm doing an approximate match again. So that's that true argument, or I can put a one instead of true. Close the bracket, hit enter. I can double click to auto fill that down and I also might want to apply some dollar formatting to that as well. So there we go, a couple of examples of how you can utilize HLOOKUP, how it's different from VLOOKUP and also a couple of extra tips and tricks in there with regards to using that transpose utility when you're pasting and also some more work on formulas as well.
Hopefully that all makes sense to everyone. I will see you in the next module. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on Excel for Business Analysts. We're still down in section three where we've been looking at everything related to looking up information using lookup functions in Excel. And so far we've focused on VLOOKUP and in the last module I introduced you to its sister function of HLOOKUP. We're going to start to move on into some of the other lookup functions available in Excel now and we're going to introduce the MATCH function. Now, if you've never used match before, it is a lookup function that you'll find on the formulas ribbon underneath the lookup and reference group. And if you scroll down to M's, you'll see it sitting in there. And you can see as I hover over, we get that little screen tip and it says match returns the relative position of an item in an array that matches a specified value in a specified order. Now that's quite hard to visualize and understand. So a, an easier way of thinking of it is match will tell you the position of a particular item within an array or a table or a group of cells. And positional information can be particularly useful when you're performing lookups. So in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the VLOOKUP that we've already looked at and I'm going to show you how you can automate it slightly, make it a little bit more efficient simply by adding in a match function. So let's take a look at our first example. Now on this spreadsheet here, again, I have a couple of very simple tables. In the top table, we have a list of employee names and then we have some certain aspects of a yearly review. So in this case, this is the results of the 360 yearly review for the finance team. And we can see all the members of the finance team listed out there. It then gives us a score out of 100 based on their review for each of these disciplines. So initiative, teamwork, creativity, attitude, development, tech ability and communication. And then what we have underneath is a very small little table, which just lists out three of those employees and three of those criteria. So it might be that out of the whole finance team, I am a manager within the finance team, and maybe I look after these three particular employees, and I'm particularly interested in the scores they achieved for teamwork, communication, and initiative. So what I essentially want to do here is use a VLOOKUP to pull out of the top table the results that I'm looking for and populate this bottom table, but I'm going to use a match function as well to make that a lot more efficient for me. So first of all, let's build this up. Let's take a look at what we would do if we were purely using VLOOKUP. So what I could do here is I could type in equals and I'm actually going to construct this formula up in the formula bar because sometimes the process of actually typing in the formula into a cell can obscure some of the cells which you want to select. So just to keep everything neat, we are up in the formula bar. I'm going to type in VLOOKUP. I'm going to open my bracket and it's asking me for my lookup value. So I want to look up the employee name, cell A18, comma. It's now asking me which table do I want to look up this information? Well, I want to look it up in this table just here. And remember, because I'm going to copy this down, I'm going to make these table references absolute by pressing the F4 key just to put those dollar signs in front of the row and the columns. Comma. It's now asking for column index number. So the first one I'm looking up is teamwork. So counting from left to right, I can see that is one, two, it's column three. Comma. Do I want to do an approximate match or an exact match? Well, in this example, I'm looking for the name of the employee, Ming Li, in this case. So I want to do an exact match. So I'm going to put false on the end there and close my bracket. Hit enter and it pulls back the correct result. I can see there for teamwork that Ming Li did in fact score 59 out of 100. And what I could do here is I could double click to auto fill that down. And if I just do a quick visual check, Courtney Lane, 58, Kirk Collings, 80. So that all appears to be working. Now, the way that I've done it there is just utilizing VLOOKUP and you can see that that's worked. So it's absolutely fine for me to use. But remember, I have a very small data set just here. Imagine if you had a much larger data set, possibly with thousands of rows and maybe a hundred or so columns. 
Sometimes counting across those columns to find the correct number or counting the rows if you're using HLOOKUP can be extremely tedious and time consuming. So a much more efficient way of doing it would be to automate the process of finding that column or row number. And what I'm talking about here is if we take a look at this formula, again up in the formula bar, you can see this number here, number three, this is the column index number. This is where I've counted one, two, three. Imagine if I had a hundred rows, do I really want to start counting along? No, I don't. So it'd be much more efficient for me to automate using a function, the finding of this particular column index number. And for that, we can use the match function. So let me just show you what match does on its own, and then we'll combine it with our VLOOKUP. So I'm just working in cell F17. I'm going to type in equals match and open my bracket. You can see my arguments underneath. So it's asking me for the lookup value. So I want to automate the finding of the column position. So my lookup value here is going to be teamwork. So B17, comma, lookup array. Where do I want to look up this word? Well, I'm looking it up in this headings row. So I'm going to select all of that heading row just there comma. Do I want to do an exact match, less than or greater than? Well, I'm looking up exactly the word teamwork, so I'm going to do an exact match, which is zero in this case. Close my bracket and hit enter, and it gives me the position in that data, in that table, of the word teamwork. So it's telling me that it's in position number three. And if we go back to our VLOOKUP formula, you can see that we have number three just there. So what I could essentially do is replace this number three in the VLOOKUP formula with my MATCH formula. Now a simple way of doing that is just to double click to jump into your formula, highlight it and press CTRL C to copy the formula. I'm going to hit enter just to come out of there. I'm going to go up to my VLOOKUP formula in the formula bar. I'm going to highlight where we have the number three and sometimes it's a little bit tricky just to get that number three. I'm going to do control V just to paste in that match formula and hit enter. And you'll see there it's given me the correct answer of 59, but we've automated the finding of the position. Now, what you'll notice is if I try and use this autofill handle to copy this formula down, I'm going to get errors in the other two cells. And that is because I need to make sure that I also make sure that those cell references in the match formula are absolute. So I'm going to jump up to my formula bar, click in B17 and F4 that, and I'm going to also F4 the table array. And hit enter. And now let's copy down and you can see that I now get those correct results. Now this time I'm going to do the same thing again, but I'm going to name my table instead. So I'm going to click at the top. Control A to select all of that top table, and I'm going to name this range Review and hit Enter. So now let's pull out the results for the communication aspect of this review for each of those three employees. I'm going to do this up in the formula bar again. We're going to say equals VLOOKUP, open bracket. Lookup value is going to be the employee name, A18, comma, the table array, I've named it so I can press the F3 key and that's going to show me all of my named ranges and I can select review from there for my table array, comma, column index number. Now, if you remember, this is the part that we automated. So this is where we would add match, open bracket. Lookup value this time is communication, and I'm going to F4 that. My lookup array, well, I'm looking up the word communication in this particular range, so A4 to H4, and I'm going to absolute both of those by pressing F4, and I'm doing an exact match for the word communication, so I want a zero on the end just there. And I'm going to close off my match formula. Now that I've closed off that formula, it's taken me back to my VLOOKUP formula because I still have one more argument I need to add. So if I press comma, you can see that I still need to put on the end whether this is an approximate match 
or an exact match. And now, because we're back in VLOOKUP, we're talking about that employee name. Do I want to do an exact or an approximate match? Well, I want to do an exact match, so my last argument is false or zero, and close off my bracket. Hit enter, and it gives me a result of 59. Now, it's a bit of a coincidence that both teamwork and communication are 59. I did wonder if I'd made an error, but if you actually look in the communications column for the result for Ming Li, which I'll highlight just here, it actually is 59 for communication as well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to double click to copy that down and you can see I get the results for Courtney and Kirk. And if I do a quick visual check, I can see that Courtney has got 57 for communication and Kirk has 52. Let's do that one last time so we can pull out the results for initiative. I'm going to jump up to my formula bar equals V lookup open bracket. Lookup value is cell A18 comma table array, well I've named it so I can press F3 and select review, comma, this is the part we've automated so we want to start off our match function. What am I matching? I'm matching the word initiative, so D17, and we want to make that absolute as we're going to copy this formula down, comma, where do I want to look up that word? I want to look up that word in this top row and I want to make sure that those don't move as well. So we're gonna lock those bad boys down. Comma, I want to do an exact match for the word initiative and I'm gonna close off my match formula. I still need to do a comma and add on whether I want to do an approximate or false match for my VLOOKUP and I want to do a false or an exact match and for this I'm going to type in zero and close my bracket and hit enter. I can then safely go in, copy this all the way down and those are my results and you can always do a quick visual check just to make sure that those are correct in the initiative column. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how you can utilize both VLOOKUP along with MATCH to make your lookups a little bit more efficient and a little bit more powerful. That's it for this module. I will see you in the next one. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on Excel for Business Analysts. We're coming towards the end of section three and in this section we've been looking at everything to do with lookups. And we've seen quite a few examples so far which have shown you how you can utilize VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP and also the MATCH function in order to perform some really powerful lookups. What we're going to do in this module is I'm going to show you an even better way of performing lookups using INDEX, MATCH and the new XLOOKUP function. Now, index and match are seen as a good, more flexible alternative to using VLOOKUP when performing your lookups. So to really understand what those advantages are, I'm going to start out by telling you about the main drawback when it comes to using VLOOKUPs. And if you've been going through some of my examples on VLOOKUP, you may have begun to ask yourself the question or noticed what that main drawback is. So I've quickly switched back to a VLOOKUP spreadsheet. Now, when you're performing a VLOOKUP, remember that your columns are essentially numbered and that enables you to pull back the information that you need. So for example, if I'm looking up the figures for teamwork, I put my VLOOKUP together and I count my number of columns. And you always count from left to right. So one, two, three. Teamwork is the third column. Now we've seen how we can automate that process to make it a bit easier using MATCH and you can definitely use VLOOKUP along with MATCH. However, you will find problems start to occur if you're trying to do a VLOOKUP where the lookup value is to the right of what you're trying to look up. So if I was using communication as my lookup value and I wanted to pull back the employee information, I wouldn't be able to do that because I can't add minus figures into my VLOOKUP. So I couldn't say, look for the word communication and then count back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. I couldn't say minus seven in order to pull back that employee name. 
So VLOOKUP has a limitation that you can only look from left to right, and your lookup value must always be to the left of the information you want to look up. Now that might be absolutely fine for you, and in a lot of the scenarios you come across, it will probably be completely fine. However, there are some occasions where you need to be able to do a lookup where you can literally search anywhere in the table using a lookup value. And that is where index and match comes in. So let's take a look at our first example. So on this worksheet here, you'll see that this might be some kind of market research spreadsheet. And this is showing me some of the most popular apps available for the iPhone. It's showing me the category that the app falls in. It's showing me the name of the app. And you can see there we have lots of the popular ones on there. Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, Messenger, all those kinds of things. The type of app that it is. So if it contains in-app purchases, if it's a free app or if it's a subscription app. We have the revenue for that particular app and the profit for 2019. And then what we have over to the right of that is we have a little table here. And you can see in the top cell, it says select app. And currently in cell H4, it has Google Docs. I then have blank cells for category, type, profit and revenue. And I want to populate all of these cells. So essentially what I want to do here is I want to look up Google Docs in this table of data and I want to pull back the category, the type, the profit and the revenue. Now, the reason why I wouldn't use VLOOKUP for this is because in the case of the category, if you look at where the category falls, category is in column one and my lookup value is the app, which is in column two. So if I was doing a VLOOKUP utilizing Google Docs, I wouldn't be able to count forward columns using a VLOOKUP because the thing I'm trying to look up is actually to the left of the lookup value. So this is why in this case, I'm going to use an index along with our good old favorite match. So let me start out by showing you them separately. We've already seen match, but let's take a look at what index does on its own, because quite often you will hear index and match used together in the same sentence because they are so frequently used together, but they are in fact completely separate functions. And as always, you will find them on the formulas ribbon. In the lookup and reference section, you'll see that we have index in there. And then a few below, we have our match function. So separate functions that we're going to utilize together. So let's take a look at index. First of all, I'm going to type in equals index. Open my bracket. Now you can see we have quite a few arguments underneath here. Now you don't necessarily have to use all of them. Remember any arguments that are in square brackets are optional arguments. So what I'm going to focus on here is just selecting the array and the row number. So the thing I need to think of here is when I'm doing an index is what am I looking up? Well, I'm looking up the category. So the first thing it's asking me for is the array. So I'm going to go to my table and I'm going to select the category array. And all array really means is the cell range. So I'm going to select everything in my category column, A5 to A50 comma. Now it's asking me for a row number. So I'm looking up Google Docs. So what I need to do is count down rows until I get to Google Docs. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So my row number is row number six. I'm going to close off my bracket and I'm going to hit enter. And you can see it pulls back the correct category, which is productivity. Now that's all well and good. I've got my result. But imagine again if you had a lot more data than I've got here. I don't have a particularly large data set, so it's quite easy for me to count down, if not a little tedious. But essentially, to make this more efficient, we want to do what we did in the last example and automate the finding of this row number by putting a match function in there as well. So let's remind ourselves of what match does on its own. Let's say equals match open bracket. I'm matching Google Docs, which is in cell H4. Now, remember, I might decide to change what app I've got typed in there. So I want to make sure I use the cell reference. Comma is now saying, OK, where do you want me to find the word Google Docs? What is the lookup array? 
Well, I want you to find the word Google Docs in the app list. So my array is this cell range just here. Am I doing an exact match? Yes, I want you to exactly match the word Google Docs. So we're going to have a zero in there and close off our bracket. And it gives me that row number, row number six. So essentially what I can do is combine my index and my match together in order to perform this lookup. So let's do the whole thing from the beginning. I'm going to type in equals index, open my bracket. What am I looking up here? The category. So I want to choose the category array. I'm going to do a control shift down to make that a little bit quicker. Comma. Row number, this is where we add our automation. So I'm going to say match, open bracket. My lookup value is whatever is in cell H4 at the moment, that is Google Docs, comma. Where am I looking that up? Well, I'm looking it up in the app list. So I'm going to select the top one, control shift down to select the entire column, comma. And I'm doing an exact match, so zero on the end. And because I've opened two parentheses, I want to make sure that I close off both of them and hit enter. And there we go. I now have my result of productivity, which I can see here is correct. So now if I was to change the app up here to, let's say, Doom and hit enter, you can see that that formula automatically updates. So it's now telling me that the category is game. And if I do a quick visual check, I can see that yes, that is correct. Now, if I wanted to make this even more efficient and easier to read, I could start naming some of these columns. So for example, I'm going to name the category, the app and the type column. So I'm going to click on category, control shift down. I'm going to go up to my formulas ribbon and I'm going to say create from selection. And what this will do is it will create me a named range and it's going to ask me what I want that named range to be called. So it's saying create names from values in the and then it's selected top row for me. So if I keep this selection, it's going to name this range based on what is in that top row, which is category. And I'm fine with that. So I'm going to click on OK. If I click the drop down in the name box, I can see that I now have a named range called category. So I'm going to do exactly the same for app. I'm going to click in the top, control shift down to select the entire column, create from selection, use the top row. OK. And now I have app and category. And let's do that one more time. Control shift down, create from selection, create from top row. OK. So now I have app category and type. And I can now utilize these in my index and match just to make the entire formula a lot neater. So let's do another one. I'm going to say index, open my bracket. So this time I'm looking up the type and it's asking me for the array. So I'm going to use my named range. Now remember you can press F3 to bring up all of your named ranges in your workbook. And my particular named range that I'm going to use is called type comma. It's now asking me for the row number. This is where our automation comes in. Match, open bracket. Lookup value is whatever is in H4. And remember, if you are going to drag this formula down, you're going to want to make that absolute by pressing the F4 key to lock that in place. Comma. Where do I want to look up the word doom? Well, I want to look it up in the app list and I have named that named range. So I'm going to say F3 and I'm going to say app, comma. I want to do an exact match. So that's zero and close off both of my brackets and hit enter. And if I do a quick visual check for Doom to make sure that information is correct, it is the category game and the type is in app purchases. If I was to change this to, let's say, Temple Run, the top one, hit enter. That's in fact exactly the same. So that is game and in-app purchases. Let's do something slightly different. Let's say Slack, hit enter. It's telling me it's in the communications category and it is a free app. So let's have a quick look. There we go. Communications, Slack and free. So I can see that that formula is working correctly. Now, just as a side by side comparison, because we did both of those formulas in a slightly different way on the formulas ribbon in the formula auditing group, I'm going to say show 
formulas. And you can see the shortcut key for that is Control plus apostrophe. So let's click Show Formulas. I'm going to go across to here, and you can see both of those formulas next to each other. So I think you'll agree that the one that we've done for type is a lot easier to read. It's a lot more meaningful, and it helps us get rid of all of these kind of messy cell references. But the other way does work as well. It's entirely up to you which one you would like to use. So that's how you can utilize Index and Match to perform more powerful lookups. I'm going to finish this module off by just introducing you to a brand new function. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because this function is only available to people who use Microsoft 365, the latest version of Excel. So if you have an older version, so if you're using 2013 or 2016, you're not going to have access to this particular function. Now, if you're not sure which version you're using, a quick way of checking if you have access to the function is just to select a cell, type in equals, x lookup, open your bracket, and if you get all of the arguments underneath, then Excel is recognizing that function and you have access to it and you can use it. If you get nothing, then you more than likely do not have it. Also, another way to check is if you go up to Lookup and Reference and scroll down. If you can't see XLOOKUP in there at the bottom of the list, then it's likely that you don't have this function yet. But if you are using the latest version of Microsoft 365, then this is one of the new features. And I'm going to demonstrate it because it takes all of the hassle out of doing index and match. So we've seen a couple of examples which work perfectly well, and if you are used to those and you'd like to use them, that's absolutely fine. But I just want to show you how simple XLOOKUP is at performing exactly the same thing. So we're going to do this again, and we're going to look up the profit. But we're going to use XLOOKUP, open bracket. Now with XLOOKUP, it's asking for the lookup value. So my lookup value is whatever is in H4, in this case, Slack, comma. It's saying, OK, where do you want me to look up the word Slack? Well, I want you to look it up in the app column. Now, I could select my range, but because I've named mine, if I press F3, I can choose the app named range, comma. Now it's asking for the return array. So very simply, it's saying, OK, once I found this app in this column, what do you want me to return? Well, I want it to return the profit which is this column just here, the last column. Now, I haven't named this column, so I'm literally just going to select it, Control shift down and close off my bracket. Hit Enter, and it gives me my results. So let's have another quick look. Let's find Slack and make sure that that is correct. So it's a communications app. It's free and the profit is 341904. Now, you may have to apply some formatting to this, so I'm going to jump up to home. I'm going to give that some dollar formatting like so. And if I come in here and change the app to, let's say, Twitter, hit enter. Let's make sure that that all updates correctly. It's a social media app. It's free and the profit is 1457232240. And I can see that that is correct. So again, if we go into show our formulas, just so you can see the difference, look how much neater and easier XLOOKUP is. Let's do it one more time for our revenue. Equals XLOOKUP. Lookup value is whatever is in H4. I'm looking up the app in the apps list so I can select my cell range or press F3 and select my named range. And I want it to return the revenue. So I'm going to select the top cell, Control shift down, close off my bracket and hit enter, and there I have my revenue. Let's just make sure we add some formatting to that and do a quick visual check. So let's find Twitter. And I can see that yes, all of those values are correct. Let's do one final switch so we can make sure that this is working. I'm gonna say Candy Crush, hit enter. It's the second one down. 
and I can see that yes, it's picking up all of those figures correctly. So you've seen a few examples there, index and match, or if you have the newest version of Excel, you can utilize that really powerful and really simple XLOOKUP feature. That's it for this module. In the final module in this section, I'm just gonna add to this a little bit and show you a little bit of data validation to make these lookups really slick. So please join me in the next module for that. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the files the instructor used in this tutorial and follow along, click over there. And click over there to watch more videos on YouTube from Simon Says It.